our experience of solving the higher order differential equations for its complementary function tells us that we have to find a number of roots and then we have to put them in a quad uh, in a um, complementary function and then the question of dynamic stability can be quite intricate depending upon the number and the nature of roots for example in the last video we learnt about this yc and you can see that there are four roots in it out of which r1 r2 and then h determine the overall dynamic stability of this time path r1 is negative so that's a good thing for our dynamic stability requirement r2 is not less than zero so that will create doubts if we are going to get the dynamic stability h is less than zero that is it is negative so that's another good thing but this is that part which creates doubt and uh, overall the dynamic stability might not be achieved so the greater the number of roots the more will be doubts because their values can be undesired a few of them can be undesired and uh, others can be desired ones so in order to get some conclusive sort of um, result as well as something uh, more uh, more convenient we are going to use this uh, theorem which was provided by uh, Routh Edward Routh who lived for this time span he was an ag English mathematician and he gave this idea that if we have a, a higher order differential equation that has an order greater than 2 the roots will increase and uh, the complementary function can have all these types of the roots that is three types and then the complexity can increase also the dynamic stability it's uh, it gets entangled so in order to um, come up with an easier solution uh, we resort to this theorem that he uh, provided us and this is known as Routh theorem it is after his name and it tells us about the convergence of the higher order differential equations so uh, without calculating the roots if we can get to the dynamic stability of a differential equation uh, we we should use the Routh theorem this is the basic utility of Routh theorem it doesn't allow us to plot a time path this is a limitation because we don't have roots and we don't have the complementary function so we are unable to uh, plot a time path in this case this is the limitation of the Routh theorem as it doesn't calculate the uh, roots and the formation of this uh, uh, of this characteristic equation of the higher order differential equation is as follows you can see the characteristic equation is mentioned here a naught is equal to one in the standard form and you observe that the power of the roots they increase you can see r1 r two must be here somewhere and our n minus two and our n minus one and finally the highest part is appearing whereas the coefficient uh, co uh, subscript is decreasing as we go from left to right uh, is increasing from left to right as we can observe the highest order uh, coefficient has uh, highest order subscript is appearing in this coefficients subscript so after understanding this uh, characteristic equation and its formation how it is developed it has a certain pattern we can um, guess that we will have a number of roots that is n number of roots in case of um, a higher order differential equation of nth order and all of them should be negative in order to get the dynamic stability and if this happens then uh, these determinants all of them will be positive so in other words if the, all of the roots are desirable all of these determinants should be positive now the question is that how these determinants will be developed first thing is that we can see all of the coefficients in it a1 a2 a3 a4 a5 up to a6 and a7 and a0 down to the lowest one all of these are the coefficients on the left hand side in the characteristic equation so we simply need to extract the values from the given equation and we can put them here and come up with these determinants and solve them and we should check their positivity and if all of them are positive we have a convergent 
uh, time path of the given differential equation. Now you can grammar all these or you can have a pattern of their development because we need to remember these determinants. Here what we have done is we have developed uh, a kind of pattern and in this pattern uh, there are a few points that we should remember. These determinants will be equal to the order of the uh, differential equation. If the order of the differential equation is 4, it means that we will develop 4 determinants and we will solve them. Just like in this case it is suitable for the 4th order differential equation. Now this is uh, uh, the set of red arrows which have a V-shape and they are in the principal diagonal to the last column. As you can see if I take this 4 into 4 determinant, uh, this red line, these red lines are basically forming a kind of V-shape though a little slanted towards the left but it forms a kind of V-shape and it starts from this uh, uh, upper column, uh, upper element and from here it joins the uh, last column this is the last column so the movement is from this to that and this movement is uh, adjacent with the subscripts that is 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 so this uh, formation is evident from this it holds in all of these determinants a1 a2 a3 a4 a5 a1 a2 a3 and a1 so all of these follow the same pattern. These red arrows are guiding them. Then the yellow arrows are also having some sort of pattern. They are the uh, yellow arrows uh, that are moving above and below from the diagonal. As you can see below the diagonal it is moving downwards and again downwards, 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 downwards. Above the arrow they are moving upwards. So it has a pattern and these arrows are actually guiding us about the values because um, a1 below it would be a0 a0 uh, below will be a uh, would be 0 because b before a0 there is no other coefficient in the differential equation and then again below or before a0 there will be 0 and another 0 a1 and then a0 and then a3 below it would be a2 and then above the arrow we have higher values that is a2 then a3 a2 then a3 a3 a4 a5 so you can see there there is a certain pattern in this now zeros are used where the elements are below a0 as you can see below a0 we are using zeros again these are the zeros we are using below the a0 because before a0 in the differential equation there is no um, value that is just uh, looking at this before a naught there is no other uh, coefficient so we have to put zero before it and then uh, there is another point uh, which is uh, a salient feature and that is that the subscript of the coefficient can be greater than the order of the given differential equation the order in this case was four of the differential equation but here you can see some elements that are having the subscript greater than four that is a5 a6 and a7 all of these are greater than the order of the given differential equation but we don't have to worry about these because again they are not in the differential equation is if we go back um, in you know these um, values uh, as we will see in the coming slides let me show you uh, I have the value of a4 here so if I use a5 and a6 and a7 they will be equal to 0 because they are absent in the given differential equation the highest order coefficient that I have is a4 so in, it means that we can have other coefficients that are beyond the highest order coefficient but they will be equal to 0 and they will not create any problem here we have mentioned those three extra coefficients now let's do this with the help of an example so that we get more we get clearer about this um, certain um, route theorem it's a differential equation with a fourth order and what we are required is without calculating the roots we have to judge the dynamic stability so this is the basic utility of the Rao theorem that we are going to 
execute here. The values of A0, A1, A2, A3, A4, and maybe B, which is not going to be used, they are extracted here. And uh, A1, A0 is equal to 1, which is usually the uh, case in the standard form of the differential equation. Um, now we can develop the Rao theorem determinants. Since it's a fourth order um, differential equation, so we will have four um, determinants and four determinants will be having, the last one will be having the order of four into four. The development of this I have explained to you and all of these should be equal to, uh, should be positive in order to have uh, a, pop um, a dynamically stable time path. I have put these in the boxes, ones that are um, not present in our uh, differential equation. These will be equal to zero when we substitute their values. So we have uh, substituted the values one by one here, A1. The value of A1 is 6, so the first determinant is 6. Here, the second determinant, we have substituted those values and it is uh, having a positive value when we solve this determinant, which is easy thing for us. Uh, you can do it yourself. And then the third determinant is being solved here, where A5 should be equal to 0 because it is absent in our uh, differential equation. Now we can solve this 3 into 3 determinant, which again should be a good exercise for you of solving the determinants and the point that we need to note here is that it is also positive. Finally we have, uh, we are just trying to remind ourselves that A5 is equal to 0 because its coefficient doesn't exist in the given differential equation. This is the fourth one, the fourth different uh, determinant that we are going to solve by plugging in these zeros instead of these uh, additional coefficients and then we can solve this 4 into 4 determinant and we can get the answer. So it's a small DIY again. It will be 6400 which is again positive. So uh, this is a reminder of why A5 and A6 and A7 are 0. So we can see that all of the determinants under the Rao theorem that is these values are positive. It means that we are dealing with the differential equation that has a time path which is dynamically stable. And you see that we haven't calculated any of the roots. We have uh, come to the conclusion of the dynamic stability in a very emphatic way where we don't have any doubts in it. Now another example which should give us another possibility is furnished here. We have Rao theorem in this case that is going to be applied to judge the dynamic stability without applying, without finding the characteristic roots. So this is the given differential equation. We are extracting those uh, coefficient values that we use. We have four coefficients and the order is three. So we will have three determinants as you can see in the next uh, slide. These are three. So A1 is equal to 1, A0 is equal to 1. We already know in the standard form A0 is equal to 1. However, A1 is uh, equal to minus 2. So here we get a hack because A1 is the first determinant as you can see. So uh, A1 is negative. It means that the very first determinant is negative. It means that out of these four or three determinants that we are going to solve, the first determinant is already found to be negative. It violates the requirement where all of the determinants should be positive. So from the very first value, without solving the second or the third determinants, we are already have a, having the violation of the requirement that all of the determinants should be positive. So from here we can judge that the dynamic stability is absent, that is there is dynamic instability. Uh, however, we should solve it thoroughly in order to have a complete and wholesome answer. A2 is also there, A3 is there, B is also there that we have extracted from the given differential equation. These are the three determinants that we have to solve in this case. This was a general formula. So 4 into 4 order was there as well as so on was there. All those possible determinants can be developed. We already know that the first determinant is negative. However, we are going to solve the rest of the two determinants. Uh, you can read these lines. These will guide you about the same thing that I have told you. 
this is a1 and this is the second derivative the second uh, determinant the third determinant this is already found to be negative when we solve this it becomes equal to 0 which is not uh, uh, having either of the signs so it is inconclusive and then the third uh, one is also solved which is equal to 0 these are the two uh, coefficients that are absent in our given differential equation so they are uh, substituted as 0 it is also equal to 0 so it's also inconclusive and now what we have found is that not all of them are positive uh, first one is negative and other two are inconclusive so the first determinant basically indicates that we are d dealing with a situation which is dynamically stable that is the time path of this given differential equation is dynamically stable just owing to the violation in one of the determinants because all of them should have been positive in order to get the dynamic stability so you see how easily we can judge the dynamic stability of the higher order differential equations simply by resorting to this theorem which resorts to determinants that we have been solving many times before and this is the standard form of it this theorem which was presented by Edward Routh and it is basically designed to tell us about the convergence of higher order differential equations thank you